All right, welcome to chapter 9. Uh, this is 9-1. We're looking at probability. Um, and before we start, or as starting, we're just going to look at some simple definitions. So just the definition of probability is it's uh, the number of favorable outcomes. Uh, and favorable is a very interesting word, but we'll, we'll say the number of outcomes that you're looking for, right, over the number of possible outcomes. It's as simple as that. And this number will be between 0 and 1. Oh, I didn't draw that down here, but let's do that. So zero, uh, you know, if there's a zero chance out of whatever the possible outcomes is, let's just say five, that is, it's impossible. It can't happen. Um, so for example, if there is a group of five boys and the question was, what's the probability of selecting a girl for something? It's impossible to happen because there are, the thing that you're looking for, this favorable thing, there are zero girls in that scenario. Uh, and 0 over 5 is 0. It's impossible. Certain would be 1, meaning uh, out of, let's say, you know, out of the 5 boys, what's the possibility of drawing a boy? Well, how many boys are there, right? What's the number of favorable outcomes? That'd be 5. Let me erase that, 0. That would be 5. Uh, the number of possible outcomes, there's also 5 boys. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. That's 100%. Uh, it will happen. So if there's five boys and the question is, what's the probability of selecting a boy? Well, there's only boys. It will. It's certain to happen. Anything in between that uh, is going to be, um, you know, the probability of it happening. So in the middle of 0.5, that would be a 50% chance, which is equally likely to occur or not to occur. And you move left, you know, those are less likely options and more is more rightly. So things like this could be, you know, three... Uh, 3 out of 5 would be more likely to happen. That's a 60%. 2 out of 5 would be less likely to happen. It's a 40%. So again, probability is the number that you're looking for, right? Favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. Let's continue. Experimental probability. So experimental probability, uh, it's the number of times, the number of times the event occurs in the number of times that the experiment is done. So uh, experimental means you're experimenting to figure out what the probability of something is. So let's say that I have a dice, right? And I roll it five times. And in those five times, six never comes up. Now, it, that means that out of the five times I rolled it, the six, because I'm looking for a six, right? That came up zero times in those five rolls. And that's the, the probability from my experiment that happened. Now, and we'll get into theoretical next, but just, I, I tried the experiment five times, and I got six zero times, right? So that could be an example of experimental probability. Problem number one, on page 825, talks about what is the experimental probability, oh, sorry, it says a quality control inspector samples 500 LCD monitors. So a guy is looking at 500 LCD monitors. LCD monitors. And in that, he found that there was three defects. So if you went to Best Buy or somewhere else, uh, and you're going to go buy an LCD monitor for your computer, what's the chance of it having a defect? Well, what you're looking for is how many the number of defects are, right? So it's three. There's three defects. What's the possible amount of 500? You could divide that to get 0 0.006, which, if you remember, multiply by 100 to get your percent. 0.6%. Is a 0.6%. Let's continue. Theoretical probability. Let's define this. Theoretical probability is the likelihood. of an event happening based on excuse me it's a little messy based on mathematical reasoning so it's the like a theoretical is what is the likelihood of it happening based on mathematical reasoning, and this is different than experimental probability. Experimental is just 
means I, I performed an experiment, and in my, in my experiments, how many times did what I'm looking for occur? Theoretical is going to use mass to say it should occur this many times, and there's a difference there. Um, so problem two, uh, let's look at that, it says, what's the probability of rolling numbers that add to seven? Let's actually just make this simpler. Let's say that we're talking about one dice, and we say, what, what is the probability of rolling, um, let's not do this, rolling an even number? So this isn't based off experiments. This just means if you roll the die, what's the probability of it being an even number? Well, let's look at how many sides we have on a die and what their numbers are. So we have six. How many of these are even? Two, four, six. There's three. So that means I'm looking for the even numbers over the total possible amount of numbers. So the even is three. The total sides is six. If I divide that, I get 0.5. Multiply by 100 to get my percent. Is 50%. So that means there's a 50% chance of rolling an even number. Is this, theory, is this experimental? No, experimental would mean if I rolled it six times, how many popped up is three? It could have been all six. So there's the difference there. This is just theoretically, um, how many can you theoretically roll? And there's theoretically, there's three possible outcomes over a total of six different ones. And that's how we get this. Let's look at one more thing. The complement event. Complement event, I'm going to use kind of my own definition here, is the, let me just do, that's fine, is the other possible outcomes of event. Meaning, let's look at this example here. Whoops. This example here. So let's say um, you know we're being we're asking for a volunteer from a class, and the question is, what is the probability of it being a boy? So um, if it was the probability of a boy, of selecting a boy at random, right? That well, there's three boys out of five girls. I'm sorry, out of five people total, right? So the probability is three fifths, three out of five. But if the question says, what's the complement? The complement means, well, what's the probability of not drawing a boy? Hmm. Well, if not drawing a boy, now we could just look at this and see, well, that, there's two girls, right? It has to be two out of five. The probability of not drawing a girl is, is two-fifths, right? Or two out of five. That's I mean, that's, we could just look at this picture and say that. Um, in more complicated situations, though, it's better to think about it like this. The complement is the total possible number subtracted from, or to subtracting what, uh, the original what you're or what you're looking for. So, for example, the probability of not of something not happening equals one minus the probability of that event happening, and this makes perfect sense. Let's just look at this example again with the boys. I'm gonna use a different color here, though. Red. Okay. So, if I want to know what's the probability of not drawing a boy, right? That would equal so the p of not a boy. Choose b equals one minus the probability of that event happening, which is 3 out of 5. Um, and why this works every time is just this use of 1 here, right? Because 1 could be written as a limitless amount of fractions, right? It could be written as 2 over 2, it could be written as 3 over 3, 4 over 4, right? But since we're dealing with five possible events here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it would be best to understand 1 as 5 over 5. And if I subtract that, oh, I'm getting the bottom of my page here, from three-fifths, that's how I get two-fifths. And that's it. So if you want to know the probability of something not happening, an event not happening, it's one minus the probability of the event happening. Good luck. See you in the next section.